Woodspell Apothecary and today we're going to talk about wild crafting and basic plant identification because I've gotten a lot of questions about that lately so I just wanted to share how I go about identifying plants in the wild and share a little bit about that with you and I believe that the best way to start identifying wild plants for food and medicine is by learning the plant families such as the mint family, rose family, carrot family, those sorts of things because each of these families have defining characteristics and once you figure out what these characteristics are and which families they belong to you can start narrowing down which plant it is and also what sort of medicinal and or edible characteristics that plant might have so let's get to it all right so the first plant we have here is of course stinging nettle because you can't have a spring forage without stinging nettle and the nettle plant actually belongs to the stinging nettle family or the urticaceae family and this is a really interesting family because it actually belongs to the rose order which is the next level up after the family so it does share some similar genetic characteristics just like rose and like rose it doesn't necessarily have thorns but it has these prickly uh, hairs at, on the stems and under the leaves that's a really defining characteristic also the stems of the stinging nettle family are square-ish not extremely square but squ not as round as you'd find on a normal uh, stem and also the leaves are opposite of each other so that's also defining but the, the main thing is that you're gonna notice these stinging prickly hairs on this plant and a lot of people like to harvest this with gloves so that's up to you but these hairs actually contain formic acid and formic acid is the same thing that that ants have so when you get an ant bite that's the same thing that you would experience if you were stung by nettles and this formic acid is actually used in kind of an unconventional way sometimes people with rheumatic joints or painful joints will use a stinging nettle stem and kind of whip themselves with it on their joints and this actually increases inflammation but that it also stimulates healing as well in these joints so it's just really in interesting how this plant could be used medicinally it's also uh, really known for how nutrient packed and full of vitamins and minerals it is and so a lot of people will use it in pestos stews some people make it into a powder which I'm gonna try this year so I can add to my smoothies and just get an extra boost which is really great after a long cold winter so that's a, a great way to use it uh, medicinally it's also a diuretic it's an astringent but mostly it's known for just how nutrient packed and vital it is for your body and your well-being here we are with the next plant and this is garlic mustard and garlic mustard is of course part of the mustard family or the brassicaceae family the brassica family and some defining characteristics of the mustard family is that they shoot up really quickly in the spring they flower and they set seed um, almost before most of our other plants even bloom and also these plants will have little white flowers each flower has four petals with six stamens, four that are tall and two that are short. So that's also a defining characteristic of these plants. Of course, these aren't flowering right now, but another great telltale sign of the mustard family is you can uh, crush up the leaves and smell it, and it'll have that very distinctive garlicky, mustardy smell. So smell can be a really great um, tool for you to use when you're trying to identify plants especially with certain types of families, especially the mustard family. And with garlic mustard, when you harvest this, this is an extremely invasive, aggressive plant. As you can tell, it is just kind of taking over. So don't feel bad with how much you harvest. If you have a shovel, go ahead and literally dig up the whole plant because um, you're native plants and everybody will thank you for that. So now garlic mustard is a great wild edible and it also contains sulfur glycosides, which are essentially irritants. So these irritants actually stimulate digestion, which is really great. They can also help to stimulate a cough. If you have mucus in your lungs, you can make a poultice of garlic mustard, put it right on your chest to help expel that mucus. And as a wild edible, you can, again, put it into pestos, stews, saute it. It's really good uh, with ramps or wild leeks or field garlic in a pesto that way and just get creative with it. 
So I'm here with my next plant. It's really hard to get in the shot because it's so low growing right now. So I'm gonna just do a close up for you so you can see it and just talk about it. I have a little stem here and it is of course catnip, my cat's favorite plant. And catnip is a part of the mint family or the Laminaceae family. And this is a really distinctive family and you'll find a lot of wild edibles and medicinals in this family. And you'll notice that these have a very square stem, four sides, unlike the stinging nettle family that's kind of somewhat square, so a little bit rounder. So this is very square and they also have opposite leaves, so they grow opposite of each other on the stem. And also another defining characteristic of this family is that they are typically very aromatic. So if you crush a leaf and you smell it, you'll smell those volatile oils. Of course, this isn't always the case. There are certain uh, plants like self-heal self -heal prunus vulgaris that don't have a scent, so it's more of a guideline than a rule, but they will always have these square stalks with opposite leaves. And catnip, you'll find the leaves are very soft and fuzzy and um, just really comforting and soothing, which also lends itself to its medicinal properties because it is a great nervine, a mild sedative, which is really gentle and it's safe for kids, elders, anyone. It's really great in a tea. It's a tasty tea. You can make a glyceride out of it, a tincture, and it's just a really abundant wild medicine that grows in disturbed spots along woodlands edges as you can see here and I just really like this plant all around so I transplanted some into my garden put some in pots for my cats and they love it and so one of the main volatile oils in most mint plants and catnip is no exception is menthol and menthol is a volatile oil that helps to open up the pores to induce sweating break a fever um, also stimulate delayed menstruation and is also just really soothing and calming and is smells wonderful in my opinion. Of course, it's very pungent, very aromatic, so that is up to you. It's purple dead nettle, and purple dead nettle is part of the mint family. This is most known for its edibility as a spring wild green, and so you can use it in pestos or stir fries, uh, but it does have some medicinal qualities as well. It's also antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial so you can use it as a poultice or in a salve as well and I also found this plant will literally grow anywhere so I have this impossible place to grow under a dry oak tree uh, I tried moss there I tried wintergreen there nothing would grow but I put purple dead nettle there and it is doing great so if you want to fill in some space and need an edible plant purple dead nettle is a good choice for that so purple dead nettle does have a look-alike called henbit and once you get to know them they're pretty distinctive but when you're first starting to identify they can get mixed up. So purple dead nettle does have these purple leaves at the top and also henbit has more scalloped leaves that uh, attach directly to the stem unlike purple dead nettle here. So this is a really great low growing um, weed so you can harvest as much as you want and even transplant it into your garden. It doesn't take over, it's not too invasive, but it is a great ground cover for um, dry, shaded places as well, and a great uh, wild green and a medicinal plant. So just as I was going to the next plant, I noticed henbit, which is the purple dead nettle look-alike. So this is a really great comparison to between these two plants here. And as you can see, the leaves are connected right to the stem here, much more scalloped, and eventually they haven't bloomed yet, but it will have these little purple flowers, kind of like purple dead nettle. But um, as you can tell, these two plants do have their dif differences. So if you see these in the wild, this is a great comparison. Alright, so this next plant I'm with is still growing quite small, though she will get to be nice and large and tall throughout the season. This is motherwort, and motherwort is another medicinal mint family member. Again, she has square stems, opposite leaves. If you crush her leaf, though, it's not as aromatic as uh, catnip, though it does have sort of a pungent sort of aroma that's kind of hard to put your finger on. It's not exactly grassy, but it's kind of citrusy and just 
pungent as well. I don't know, somebody else might have a different opinion, but it's not as strong, but it is part of the mint family. And as it grows, it will have little spikes near the flowers. Um, it grows some nice, beautiful purple flowers that are wonderful to have in the garden. I've seen this plant growing obviously in full sun or even in the woods in the shade. So if you have a shady spot in your garden, transplant some there, or it just grows wild in a lot of disturbed areas. And now motherwort is actually known to be a woman's herb because it helps to tonify the female reproductive system. It's also great for stress-induced panic attacks. Rosemary Gladstar has also talked about what a wonderful ally this is for empty nest syndrome, as well as strengthening and gladdening the heart. And so this isn't just great for the heart on a vibrational or emotional level, but it's also good for uh, weak or irregular heartbeats. And so all around, this is just a really comforting, motherly, maternal herb. And I actually include it in my Baba Yaga bitters for this purpose. I combine it with rosemary, sage, and tulsi to just give that comforting, clarifying uh, vibration and energy about it. And it is actually one of our most potent bitters, though it's not known for that. It is very strong, very potent to help stimulate digestion. And so now, like I said, this is still a small plant, but you can harvest the leaves for medicine. And this is best in a tincture because as I noted, it is very bitter. And this actually only needs to be tinctured for two to three days. And the longer that you tincture it, the more bitter it becomes. So it's really your personal preference, but I find two to three days is just fine. And it's actually tinctured best when it is fresh. You just get the most, uh, most vibrant, medicinal properties that way. And as it grows bigger, it will grow the purple flowers, as I mentioned, so you can also tincture the flowers once it gets bigger. But right now for spring, the leaves will do just fine. While I was walking, I also found these adorable little heart's ease that are popping up, very similar to violets. They're part of the viola family, which often have heart-shaped or kidney-shaped leaves, which are kind of hard to see right here. But these little flowers are edible. You can add them to salads or as garnishes on baked goods as well. And they're just so pretty and um, adorable. And I love them, so I'll probably pick a few of these here too. So now, as you can tell, we have this beautiful basket of spring greens and medicine for food and healing. And I'm going to take all this home. I'll probably dry the catnip for some tea and tincture a little bit of motherwort, and then I'll take the other spring greens and um, make some tea out of the nettle probably, do some pestos with the uh, dead nettle and the garlic mustard, and just see where it goes from there. And really, this all came from one field. And so the best place to harvest all of this is in um, disturbed places, of course, make sure they haven't been sprayed or are polluted in any way. Also, on the edge of woodlands are great places to look for plants, and all of these plants that I mentioned today are extremely abundant and um, also sometimes considered invasive in certain areas. So, of course, just you know, use your best judgment, but most of these are safe to harvest a good amount of food and medicine. All right, everybody, there are five medicinal and edible plants that you can forage right now. Uh, we went over the mustard family, the mint family, and the stinging nettle family, which will hopefully give you some insight into how to start identifying these plants and the families that they belong to and see some of their defining characteristics. So if you like this video, give it a like, subscribe, and I will see you next time.